For this week's special, we read You and Me by Tal Bauer. Landon Larson is the envy of all the dads in Last Waters, Texas. He's cool, confident, and put together. He and his son, the high school's all-star quarterback, have the perfect father-son relationship. He's such a super dad. It's almost sickening. I'm not cool or confident, and my relationship with my son couldn't be worse. He's barely speaking to me, and a year after my wife died, we're both clinging to the wreckage of our family. Landon's son and mine are best friends, and of course, Landon is the football team dad. And though I know nothing about football, Landon convinces me to volunteer to be closer to my son. Volunteering might give him and me a chance to rebuild what's broken between us. Now I'm spending all my free time with the team and with Landon. And the more we're together, the deeper our friendship grows. My son is opening up too, little by little. I think I'm getting him back. There's just one giant problem. I'm head over heels for Landon. I have never been attracted to men in my life until him. Landon draws me in without even trying. And the harder I fight this, the deeper I fall. Crushing on my son's best friend's father must be my biggest parenting fail ever. But I can't get enough of Landon. Falling for him puts each fragile moment I've rebuilt with my son at risk. What would he think if he knew I craved his best friend's dad? I'm playing with fire, but I can't turn off these feelings Landon has unlocked inside me. Of course, a guy like Landon could never fall for someone like me. It's pointless to even imagine that we could be something together. So why did I just kiss him? I went to sit down and found that my cat had coughed a hairball right in the spot that I sit. <laughs> he only coughs a hairball out every like six to 12 months. And he chose today on this spot where I sit. He's never done. <laughs> it before. was a gift for you. Like, only on the floor, like by gift. his litter box area, because he's not an idiot. But today, no, today I had to clean the whole seat. Before I could sit down. He just wanted you to know that he hates that you ignore him. I don't ignore him. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. So anyways, this book, the entire perspective is in Luke's perspective. Which at first. I didn't know because it was about two pages in when we finally learned who the person was speaking. Well, because it was first person, which was fine. But at first I was a little like, Really? Seriously, we don't get the second point of view because we've been so used to getting dual point of view lately, like in just books we naturally pick. Mm -hmm. But as the book went on, it was obviously done tastefully for a reason because yeah. it was better for it to just have. It, it was. I still kind of would have liked the other side too, but I I'm also... thought it would have been nice as a bonus chapter yeah, to I'm have. I'm also just needy. Selfish. Me too, yeah. <laughs> I but I was, I was really hoping that we would get like a bonus chapter in the end, um, mm -hmm. but yeah. we did not. Spoiler alert. No, no. We start this book and Luke is currently stuck in traffic that is completely backed up on the highway. And of course, people are honking. And if you have ever been in hardcore traffic, Honking does oh, we help. should probably tell what we're reading. What are we reading, Crystal? We should probably say that first before we dive in. I don't want to. <laughs> you and Me by Tal Bauer. <laughs> so, by the way, honking doesn't help when you're stuck in traffic. You might think it does. It does no. not. It really doesn't. It just pisses a lot of people off. <laughs> Luke is actually currently on the way to his son's football practice. And his son does not know he was coming. His internal monologue throughout this whole traffic scene was so depressing and sad. Most of his internal dialogue is depressing and sad for the good like, portion of the book. <laughs> and it really got me. Like, he got me, like, so quickly. Yeah. Like, he sucked me right in. It was it was rough, yeah. But his, So his son did not know he was coming, so it wouldn't be as if his son would be disappointed if he didn't make it because, you know, traffic. But... He also does feel like Emmett will be furious when he does show up. So Emmett is his son. Everything that Luke does for his son is always met with glares and side eyes and slamming doors. And this is when we learn that Emmett's mom is dead. 
Luke thinks that no, the witch is dead. <laughs> yeah. Luke thinks that Emmett probably wishes that Luke had died instead. So it's very clear in the beginning of this book how much this death has affected the both of them. But also you can really see how their relationship is currently at this point and it's not great and but how is... just low luke yeah. feels yeah and so just depressed and just sad we get a history of how him and riley who is emmett's mom were as people when they first met luke was miserable about his second attempt at an art major and escaping his classes to go to punk rock shows And he was not a big college person. Riley, on the other hand, was a graduate student in mathematics. So they were definitely on a (laughs) very different level, but a very weird pair of people. An hour after they had met, they were making out and they ended up dating. And a year later, she ended up being pregnant. He decided at that point he really needed to clean up his act and buckle down with school, especially having a baby on the way. He eventually then asked Riley to marry him, and this was on the day when he got a brand new job offer, and they were married at a courthouse. When Emmett was born, he loved being a father to Emmett, but there was- It was like an instant turnaround for him, too. Mm -hmm. He went from being this guy who didn't really even care about life and barely cared about school and whatnot to, like, I'm going to pour everything I have into this little human. And there's a lot. Which you love uh, to see. I do too, because I mean, it that happens with a lot of people. A lot of people, I mean, they go either way. Like they don't change at all. Or there are people who, as soon as they have a kid, they're instantly changed. And it like makes their life so much better. For a flawed character, he just, he had so many things about him that just. He was a human. Yeah. He was just, he was such a human were, character. Right. We're humanized and able to just grasp. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so the, the problems between him and Riley had started very early. She had been very determined to finish her doctorate, so she struggled a lot with school and also taking care of Emmett, and they ended up growing apart very fast. They weren't even a good pair to begin with. They no. didn't mean to get pregnant. It was an accident. It was all fun. That's like, none of it. It was true. not se- – he self – said it it wasn't serious for either of them they just basically hung out and it was somebody to keep company with Emmett is very good at football and he had been very good at football at a very very young age because his mom put him into it they live in Texas and Texas is big with football I'm sure most people know this Luke though knows literally nothing about football and because it was never an interest to him you know so Riley really is the one who got him into football that's not to say like him and Emmett didn't do stuff together they used to you know color together watch cartoons so they did other stuff besides the sports but as Emmett got older they slowly started drifting apart and there just wasn't any more time in his life anymore especially with football Luke did try to learn about football and he had even asked Riley to teach him but she was really cold and mean about it so he never tried to ask her again she was a bitch we find out later on why yeah that's why i said ding dong the witch is dead but like as if football was her thing with emmett and how dare luke even try to talk to him about it or have anything to do with it that was kind of the vibe yeah for me i don't know if that was i I didn't get that i just got she was just being a bitch (laughs) she was just trying to right ostracize him almost she was just trying to like keep him out Yeah. So Emmett, though, is currently on the varsity team this year. And the only reason that Luke knows this is because there was a torn up letter in Emmett's garbage can that was addressed to Riley. And Luke realizes that nobody informed the booster club that Riley was no longer able to be with them. And instead of emailing them. Because she did. Yeah, she did. Instead of emailing them, he decided he was just going to show up instead so i mean it's fine so he got it he was in his feelings for a minute and he was like no i'm gonna let them know so they can not not send more things to the house because he wasn't the one that got the letter Emmett opened it and found it so he's like he was all fired up about it as he gets there a man greets him and <laughs> says you look super familiar and asks if it's Emmett's dad because him and Emmett look alike this man by the way is really attractive <laughs> Luke says that well, he and himself, he's able to just waltz right in. 
He's yeah. been trying to go to Emmett's games for the entire time he's been playing for the high school, but every time he tries to buy a ticket, they're sold out. And so he has to like watch from the fence or from his car. And now he's like, wait, I can just walk into practice. Like what? Yeah. Luke even says himself like that. He <laughs> Luke usually looks like he crawled out of his own grave, but this man looks like he dined on happiness. So this man's name is Landon. It's so fucking cute. Obviously he knows Emmett and he also has a shirt on for the booster club. So Luke tells him, I would appreciate it if you took Emmett's mom off your mailing list. She's dead. And fucking Landon obviously apologizes and explains that he knows Emmett because his son is best friends with Emmett. His son's name is Bowen and he is basically football's like next biggest thing. He's very popular and very, very good at football. He's the all-star senior quarterback, don't you know? Landon really talks about how awesome Emmett is and how hard he worked to get onto varsity, which Luke had no idea about at all. And he just feels that him and his son are just such strangers. And he wonders if he lost well, his son forever. He admits that his wife, Riley, did literally everything with him with football. And he has literally no idea about anything. The only thing he does know about the whole varsity thing is that he's on varsity again this year. They knew he knew that they tried to start him last year, which is unheard of for a sophomore, but they were trying to start him. But literally his first day of trying to start was the day his mom died and he just lost it all. He couldn't continue. So he got dropped back down. Landon is being so fucking nice and he is willing to help him learn about what's going on. So it's very clear that Landon and his son have a very, very good relationship. And Luke admits that he just has no idea what to do. Landon says, you know what? None of us do. Being a parent is like driving a car without brakes. <laughs> you grip the wheel and hold on tight and pray you don't crash too hard. It's very clear how Luke struggles with now trying to get more involved with Emmett. And he really can see how great of a parent Landon is. And he feels really kind of like, envious of how good of a parent Landon is. So Landon offers to let Luke volunteer with the boosters to get him more involved because it's very clear he really does want to try. So Luke agrees. He'll totally do it. Sounds great. So after practice is over, you can just sense the anger that is radiating off of Emmett, especially throughout this entire book. Like he is an angry, angry boy. He goes up to his dad and tells him that Bowen said that since Luke was there, he would just drive him a home instead. So that's what Luke's going to do. Of course, Luke is thinking, you know, does Bowen bring Emmett home all the time? Because he literally has no idea. He spent a lot of time. This is when I was like, bro. It was a lot. Yeah. He spent a lot of time coming home from work late to avoid Emmett because it was easier for both of them if Emmett was already in his room, because again, like I get he's... that he's 17, but how do you not know where your kid is or who he's in a car with? Well, considering how they've been the last year, I, I know, understand but... it, but yeah, these, but again, these men don't speak to each other. They don't spend a lot of time together. And there's a very big, obvious tension between the two of them. They drive home in absolute silence. And when they get there, Emmett asks Luke where the milk is. So by the way, Emmett drinks a fuck ton of protein shakes. So he goes He drinks like a half a gallon of a milk a lot, day. Yeah, he goes through a lot of milk. But Luke had forgotten to buy some. And now he feels like fucking failure because he forgot it. Emmett's like, why were you even at practice? And Luke says that he signed up to volunteer. And he's like, no, I meant like, why did you, why? Why did you do that? And he, Luke just says, because I want, I want to. I want to see your games. I want to be part of your life. And Emmett fucking snaps and asks him, why would he even care now? He was never there before. And then their conversation ends and Emmett leaves the kitchen. Something inside of Luke snaps and he just realizes he needs to feed Emmett and he needs to go to the store to buy milk. So he makes chicken, leaves it on the counter, texts Emmett that he has dinner on the table and he'll be back in a bit. So he goes to the store and on the way, he just starts crying. Everything is just finally coming to a head and we learned that it's been a year and three weeks since Riley has died and he just completely fucking breaks down in this car on the way to the store his phone starts going off and he's thinking well it can't be Emmett because 
Emmett does not text him. He will text Emmett. And I, it's been a very long time since he's even gotten a response from Emmett. But he does hope that it's him. It's actually Landon texting him, just reaching out about the volunteering, telling him that he's all set. Everything is good to go. He'll get his T-shirt made and have it ready for the first gig, which is for the team dinner on Thursday. And to make sure to be there at 430 and we're good to go. When Thursday comes around, Luke's really thinking in his head that he should have just texted Landon and backed out saying, I don't know what I was thinking, but I can't do this. But he does not do that. Him and Emmett are still avoiding each other. And he thinks back to the last time he tried to cook for him and Riley. Like he just, all of these memories just like continuously come through. Just so you know, Riley sucks. So he had made Parmesan crusted pork for them. And Riley apparently really hated this and tossed the dinner into the sink and wouldn't eat it. Like, and made a big scene. And made him feel so bad for trying. That he just didn't do it anymore. So he does not make that meal anymore. Because he it's got didn't such didn't really a... cook much at all because of that. No, no. And when he tried, like, it just wasn't good enough. When he gets there, Landon gives him the t-shirt that he has. And he says, you know, you can go change. But of course, <laughs> Luke's like, yeah, it's fine. It just changes right there. Just whips his shirt off. puts <laughs> a new one on. <laughs> Which is great. So the team dinner is every single Thursday night during the season and the junior varsity and varsity teams eat together local restaurants donate food and all they have to do for volunteering is set up and serve the kids we get multiple members of the booster club which most of them are just moms for the team there actually are no dads except for landon and now luke and now luke and this one named annie i liked her a lot she popped up a lot throughout the book greets them and every single mom there has made a point to go up to him and say hello while they you know while they worked they introduce themselves with like whistle while they work. Yeah. They introduce themselves, tell you know him who their sons are. They talk about the jersey numbers because on their shirts they have like the jersey number of their son. Everybody knows who his son is. And everybody knows your name. <laughs> One of the moms is talking to him about her son and talking about college and just the things about her son and asks, you know, Luke about Emmett and all Luke knows about Emmett is that he drinks a ton of milk every day. He attends school, but he has no idea what college he wants to go to. Thankfully, Annie steps in and kind of saves him from having to talk, but also wants to have a conversation with Luke. She tells him straight up, hey, you know, just so you know, Landon is gay. Of course, Luke confused as to why He would find this to be a problem, but apparently there have been problems in the past with volunteers being uncomfortable with him being gay. That Landon is literally the nicest person she has ever met, but it's going to be so exciting to have another dad around. Luke starts to think if these team dinners are every Thursday, he thinks back to the last two years and was wondering where Emmett had been on Thursday nights and that he had always told him he was at practice and it really hits him that they seriously live two separate fucking lives and he knows next to nothing about his son. They all serve all the kids and it's a lot of hard work. The youngest players eat first and the varsity players eat second. And then he finally sees Emmett and he is hanging out with Bowen. Bowen is always laughing around and smiling and Emmett is very sullen and serious and very quiet. We get more of Landon parenting. Bowen had apparently missed an English essay. But we also learned that Bowen actually has problems in English and he struggled for years. He is dyslexic and reading is super hard for him. And Landon has worked it out with his English teacher to get him back on track. Luke also meets (laughs) Emmett's coach and his coach is actually a little shocked seeing him and says he's never actually seen him around before. But the coach is really proud of how his son has fought back and that Landon's son had never let him give up and probably saved him. And now... Of course, Luke's thinking, what the fuck did he mean by he saved him? So again, it's very clear how big of a rift that these two have that he literally knows nothing going on. I thought that dig, though, was pretty shitty that I haven't seen you around here. I didn't take it that way. I think he was actually shocked because if your son has been playing football for a while and you have never seen the dad there, and I'm sure the mom said some shitty things as to why he wasn't there, so... I'm not going to sugarcoat this. The mom gets worse and worse as this goes on. We hate her. I'm just going to blanket. Bye-bye. Yeah. Because she's already dead. So she's already bye-bye. Bye-bye <laughs> again. Planet. She bye-bye off this planet. 
we also learn that Emmett is the defensive captain as well, which he also had no idea about. Landon casually asks, you know, oh, you know, Emmett's mom died last year, right? At the start of the season. And Luke's like, yeah. And Landon just says, you know, that's when he moved back down to junior varsity. That was super hard on him. But he also got the impression that it was a sudden loss. And Luke kind of opens up a little bit and just says that she had divorce papers in her purse the day she died. And he had found them and that she had been working with an attorney for months. And, you know, all he could think about is that she was going to be suing for full custody. She wanted the house, 60% of everything plus alimony. She wanted him to vacate the property and that it was just cold and vicious. And there's just like so much hatred. Internally, he was thinking like oh, he would have given her everything but he also knows that if they had actually talked and she said it wasn't working they would have figured something out he didn't want her to be so miserable we also learned that she apparently had a lot of debt she opened up personal accounts with three different banks personal loan accounts she burned through two hundred thousand dollars in 18 months and she even went through emmett's college fund he also was thinking she might have had an affair. Landon is very apologetic and says that he was also divorced, but it wasn't that ugly, but still. Luke asks what happened, and Landon just says, well, I'm gay, which is the worst thing he said. It was so funny. I laughed so hard. <laughs> um, was raised Mormon, and he did not truly know he was gay until he got married. And of course, being gay was not an option growing up, so... He had never considered it. Him and Bethany, which is his ex-wife, were middle school sweethearts. They dated throughout high school. They went to the same college together. They got married right after graduation. And his eyes really got opened up when he went to law school and he realized he wasn't quite who he thought he was. He tried Mormon counseling, but their advice was to pray. He tried non-church counseling, and thankfully he had a mentor at his law firm but it was still very difficult and there was just a lot of tears, but he is finally in a place of peace. That peace has only grown throughout the years. Luke admits that he admires the connection that I him and that in the past have been a nasty. No, <laughs> he admires the connection that him and Bowen have, and he wishes that he could have that with Emmett, that they used to be very, very close, but they're not anymore. Landon tells him that they'll get that back. They just need to find each other again. And it's a good thing what he's doing, volunteering, and it's just the little things that can add up. Luke asks what brought them out to Texas, and Landon says that Bowen was a football star at a very young age, and him and Bethany were trying to figure out what high school would be best for him. And one day, Bowen went up to them and asked if they could move to Texas so he could go to high school there, because Texas is much better for future football stars than Utah. We also learned that the mom still lives out in Utah. And Bowen goes out to go see his mom every summer. And during the football season, she comes down to watch pretty much all of his home games. Bowen knows almost everything about why him and the mom got divorced. And apparently Bowen was suspended once in fourth grade because him and another kid got into a fist fight. And the other kid was picking on Bowen about his dad being gay. So Bowen beat the shit out of him, which is fucking hilarious. <laughs> it's great. Landon then asks if he's hungry and that they should just, you know, get out of there and go get something to eat. So that's what they're going to do. They head to a sports bar that also has barbecue and they just have a conversation and talk back and forth, discussing their jobs, talk about their life in general. There's also a lot of jokes about the fact that Landon is a very good cook and that at some point Luke will just have to go over and eat. Demonstrate this, you know, <laughs> on the way back to the stadium, Luke asked Landon if they can stop off because he needs to pick up milk for Emmett. And they talk about the fact that Landon once looked into getting a cow with how much his son drinks milk. And maybe if they went halvesies, they could split the milk between the boys. <laughs> and it's just so funny. I laughed so hard because I know that like my own kid, because I have a teenage boy and I know he eats me out of house and home. But luckily we don't drink cow milk in my house. So I don't, I'm not always having to worry about milk, but you know what? I'm always running out of bread. Like I will Dude. buy a loaf of bread and then like the next day I don't have bread anymore. Why? I have no idea because I have a teenage boy. Have I had any bread? No. It's <laughs> we just go through a lot gone. of milk. We go through a lot of milk here, but it's not butter bread. Me. Luke also realizes that he himself is just he's goofing around with Landon and actually having a very good time. But Landon brings him back to the field so he can bring Emmett home and 
says that he'll see him at the game the next day. When he is there uh, to get Emmett, so he had picked up like a potato from the bar for him to eat and also the gallon of milk in the truck. So he puts them in the front and Emmett sees it, doesn't really say anything, but it's fine. And the ride was silent, but the ride is also less tense. And he is noticing that Emmett doesn't seem as angry. He's not like fucking slamming his fingers down on his goddamn phone anymore. Like as angry. He said he's, he's angry texting a little less. This book as a whole, like parenting wise was so freaking relatable, especially like if you have teenage kids, like it really was so freaking relatable in so many ways. And I loved that. I don't know if I should have loved it, but it hit home too much. (laughs) Bloody. So they start to have a little bit of a conversation while Emmett is eating at the house. And Emmett asks him if he's going to the game tomorrow. And Luke says, yes, of course. Emmett responds, do you have any idea what you're doing? But Luke just tells him he's learning and that he wishes that his mom, Riley, had taught him everything she knew. But Landon is now teaching him. So hopefully he's as good of a teacher as Bowen is to Emmett, which is so sweet. Of course, as he soon as he says this, he knew he must have said something wrong and Emmett leaves and goes upstairs. But just as he gets upstairs, he pauses and thanks him for dinner, which is very sweet. Later on that night, Landon is texting Luke and Luke is having a great time texting and he realizes that he's just sitting there waiting for these text messages to come. It's adorable. But he also learns that Emmett needs to dress up for the game the next day. And now He doesn't even know if Emmett has anything nice for him to dress up with. So he's going to go check. He realizes that Emmett does have stuff already laid out. But it is like clueless and it's sad. Well, when your wife was a shitbag and like really separated you you out for so long. It was definitely parental alienation to its finest. But I'm frustrated that he let it happen too. But I mean, sometimes it's not that you let it happen. Oh, I know. (laughs) I can still be frustrated about it. (laughs) I know. I know. I know. But he realizes Emmett's clothes are just so wrinkled and that he must have just left them in the dryer for too long. So he offers to iron his clothes for him and even asks, like, oh, do you have a tie? And he goes, no. He's like, well, I have one I can give you. And so he irons the stuff and he lays out two different options for him. Like he hangs them on his door. One of them is just like a plain tie. But the other this one got me so hard. The other one was a, a tie that is one of Luke's favorite ties that Emmett had given to him for one of favorite ties. absolute favorite tie. yeah for one of the holidays and it, it just he's gonna leave it up to Emmett to decide which one he's gonna wear Emmett picked it out and gave it to him <laughs> yeah it's so sweet Luke is so nervous for Emmett's first varsity game and he had been imagining Emmett wearing his tie all day long so he realized that Emmett did pick the sentimental tie which is so sweet. So like he's just thinking about it all day, and when he gets and the feel- the anxiety on him, and he can't like oh, he yeah. second guesses it too. He's like, oh, he doesn't even know. He could have just picked it because he liked it better. Who knows? Yeah. You know, that boy totally knows. So yeah, when he gets to the field, he is instantly put to work, and it's a very very busy trying to get everything set up before kickoff. They do get to watch a lot of the game like before halftime. So they do all the setup pregame. They get to watch actually the game. And Landon is like helping Luke understand what's actually happening during the game. And he does it so nicely and so fucking patiently to help him understand. And watching his son play and then seeing like a touchdown happen just all of a sudden out of nowhere just inspires him to draw again. And he gets like so into And he hasn't drawn since Emmett was what, seven? 11 he hasn't drawn in 11 years so six he was six since Emma was six yep so during halftime once again they get to work getting everything all set up the team wins so yay and after the game all the players like sing the fighting song it's just a really really good atmosphere and it feels like Luke has just like entered a whole new world where his son isn't depressed and hated everything about his life. And it's a world where he smiled. But of course, the smile for em- from Emmett does eventually turn into gloomy because that's just who he is. Bowen invites Emmett and Luke to go get ice cream after the game. So they go. Luke can't help but wonder if he's the reason that Emmett is always not happy and if him being there is making him not smile and he's like you know what this is why I've stayed away because he doesn't want me anywhere near him it's 
it's hard. <laughs> it's so difficult to read this poor man. Finally, though, he just, he cannot stand how sullen Emmett is being and just bursts out and says, Emmett, stop. And the fourth was the best play. <laughs> and Emmett asked him if he really did notice. And he just says, of course I noticed. I saw everything. I told you, you were amazing. He said that he kicked ass and he's glad but he got to Bowen, see it. who's always got his back. See, I told you. Yeah. It, yeah. I Bowen is so great. such a good, like. He's such a good bestie. friend. Yeah. yeah. And he says that it's totally different being able to watch the game in person. Emmett is a dude. Emmett's confused. And Luke says, When I tell you I cried, I cried so, so many times. So did not. So I. much of this book was so I many just tears. crying. <laughs> I devoured this book though. So I read it in like less than 24 hours. I meant to space it out over like four days and it did not happen. And so I just devoured it up and just sat and just bawled through almost the whole thing yeah I was yeah I cried <laughs> I cried a lot but yeah Emmett's a little confused and Luke says yeah I could never get a ticket to your home games I used to hang out in the parking lot and listen to the announcer but the games make a lot more sense when you can see the plays and Emmett's face drops and like blood drains out but they enjoy their ice cream and e Emmett <laughs> ends up ordering a strawberry hot fudge sundae which is something that he used to eat as a kid with his dad and his mom never really liked him having strawberry ice cream because his mom is a piece of shit well because it was something that luke liked i know Again, and it was something his mom, they liked together terrible. and inside luke's head as they were about to order he, he was like making a wager with himself he's like okay if he orders the strawberry that means i'm a good dad and like it was just, so sweet. Oh. yeah Sunday morning comes around and Emmett is already out of the house. <laughs> Landon ends up texting him, letting him know that Emmett is actually at his house and asks him if he's not busy, if, you know, they'd like to meet up. So he agrees. I love their whole texting conversations. So he is like pulling out different outfits because he's like really nervous to hang out with him because Landon always looks so good. And he goes, I look like shit, like 90% of the time. He's very hard on himself. But they go to a bar. We learn that Landon doesn't drink any other alcohol except for red wine. So while he's at this bar, he just orders a Diet Coke. Luke admits that you know, sports bars aren't really his scene and that he really likes art galleries and museums. Landon admits that his scene is more wine bars. <laughs> and Landon talks to him about a few wine tastings that he went to. And Luke asks him if he went with somebody. Landon says, no, I don't really date match and Luke is a little shocked and says I figured you'd be beating the men off with sticks in both hands because obviously this man is fucking attractive <laughs> Landon just admits that he's a bit more picky and probably boring and we learn that his type is just kindness and dedication and a sense of humor Luke admits that he can't even imagine dating again but if he ever does he would also want the same things they really start to bond as friends Luke even tells him that you know, Landon's going to have to teach him about cooking of wine. And as they talk while they're at the bar, they keep getting like closer and closer together. And they aren't even paying attention to the game that's going on at the sports bar. But they do eventually decide to leave. And instead of Landon taking him home, he decides they're going to go take a walk down by the river where it's nice and quiet. And they talk about their kids, what they like to do. Landon says that it, he's more of like an outdoorsy type. And Luke really likes the quiet moments in life. And he just wanted a routine and a happy home filled with love. He asks Landon if he misses Utah, and Landon says he kind of does, but his entire life was the church until it wasn't anymore. Neither one of them are ready for their kids to go to college, and as they finish up, they agree that Luke is going to continue going back to the team dinners. Landon's going to start walking home, and Luke in his head is like, I should offer him a ride. I should offer him a ride. He doesn't offer him a ride, but he gets in his truck, and he starts to leave, and Landon just stops him and says, you know... Oh, they usually have this thing on Sundays where the boys go and throw the ball back and forth at the stadium. To me, it seemed like, and it's very obvious, that Landon is trying to find literally any more excuses to hang out with this man. And it's just so fucking cute. I know. Because <laughs> he's, like, he's like, yeah, the team, they do this thing on Sundays at the stadium. The yes. romance is just so yes, wholesome. It really is. It's just wholesome. Until it's not wholesome anymore. <laughs> it's still wholesome. I Shut know. your whore mouth. I was here for it, okay? Things at home with Emmett have progressively even if it's, gotten... Even if it's wholesome, it's still wholesome. Well, it was it was wholesome. Yes, see, it's, it was wholesome the whole time. There were some holes. <laughs> All day, every day, baby. Well, if it was up to them, absolutely. So 
things at home with Emmett have gotten definitely a little bit better. He'll be in the kitchen eating instead of just eating up in his room. He started not closing his bedroom door until later at night and things are just really seeming to turn around, which is so great. Uh, in the mornings, you know, his cereal bowl and blender are rinsed out and put in the dishwasher instead of him just like throwing shit everywhere, which is really nice. The following day, he asked Emmett if he would like him to make dinner. And Emmett says, sure. So Luke makes a chicken Alfredo. And while he says that he's not going to be winning any of the greatest dinner awards, at least it's a decent meal. Even Emmett says it smells good and that he didn't even know he could make chicken Alfredo. <laughs> he, of course, when serving up, always gives Emmett the bigger portion. And when Emmett was done, he was clearly still hungry. And he, Emmett's like, well, is there any leftover? And he just slides his plate over, which is something I have definitely done. Every freaking day of my life with yep. a teenage and, boy. And Emmett's like, well, aren't you hungry? And, and he, he just goes. He makes the same eyes as Emmett. Like, what you got there? Well, Emma's like, well, aren't you, aren't you so hungry? And he's like, you know what? If you're hungry, I would rather you eat. And they talk about school and they start learning more things about each other. He even sends a text over to Landon showing his dinner. But, you know, during (laughs) dinner, he had made a small comment to Emmett when they were talking about school and everything. And Emmett was saying that they were reading Hamlet. And Luke said that it used to be his favorite. But now he wishes that Hamlet had a better father. And that completely just ruined the good time between them. And then just tensions just switched up. Luke even admits to Landon that he thinks he screwed up. But Landon reassures him and says, you're right. Hamlet's dad should have just told him to pack a bag and move to the south of France. (laughs) It was great. (laughs) So good. Tuesday comes around and work is just going crazy. He talks to Emmett. Like he'll text him and say, you know, I'm super busy, but I hope you have a good practice. And he's really just running around busy but he's gonna stop somewhere off on the way home because he's gonna get home late to get food for Emmett and Emmett's like oh I'll just make it you know healthy and it was like a sub place and he texts Landon for his he's like have you ever been to this place what is your recommendation so he gets the recommendation to bring home food he does make it home right before Emmett but by like like fucking five minutes <laughs> so quick Emmett thanks him for dinner and asks if he's going to make dinner again the following night. But he requests that he makes the pork with the Parmesan breading. And this is something, again, he has not made since the night Riley dumped it into the sink, but he says that he will make it for him. And I'm like, yeah, they continue to have more and more conversations. And all the while him and Landon are texting back and forth after work the next day, he stops off at the store to get all the things he needs to make for dinner for him and Emmett. And while he's cooking dinner, him and Emmett talk more about school. He learns more and more about Bowen and their friendship. And he tells Emmett that the more he learns about Bowen, the more impressed he is with him. The fact that their relationship has like really started to improve so much since he started going to this to the games is just, it's so great in the practices and everything. And it's so heartwarming. And it's just like, it's so good. Emmett asks if Luke's going to continue volunteering, and he just says, of course, and asks if he's cool with it. And Emmett just tells him that if he enjoys it, then it's cool. It's the most teenager response. (laughs) I mean, if you like it, it's fine. (laughs) So Landon's already waiting for him at the school on Thursday, but Landon is looking at his phone, and he's, like, frowning. So something's going on. Luke could tell something was up and ask him what's, what's going on. Turns out Bethany will be there that weekend and she usually stays at his house when she's in town usually all is fine but on her last night there last spring she tried to remember when with him and it ended in a fight Landon just says that he feels guilty though because he wasn't the man that she married Luke assures him that he has nothing to be guilty for that staying together wasn't the right choice you should not stay together when you know it doesn't work true fucking facts (laughs) Landon says you're not helping anyone in that case. No, Landon says he was planning on staying in a hotel, but Luke offers to let him stay with him instead. Luke texts Landon on the way into his office to find out when Bethany is going to arrive for the weekend and that he'll meet him. You know, she's flying in. We usually do lunch, but like, we're not going to do that. So we're going to go to the stadium early. So he's going to meet him at the stadium at three. When he gets there, he sees Bethany and she is beautiful. And he can see where all these jeans went into this sun because they're both a beautiful couple. 
but he could also see the brittleness between the two of them with Landon's like avoiding her gaze and Bethany's like staring at him. He introduces himself to Bethany and tells her that he's heard a ton about her. He is super cordial and she asks if Landon is staying with him and if Landon is happy. And this is when he realizes that <laughs> Bethany is going to take any word that he says to mean that they're together. But he doesn't even like deny it. Like, but he does tell Landon. He feeds into it instead to yeah. kind of like set the boundary there for Bethany for Landon. He thinks he's yeah. doing Landon a favor. Yeah. So he tells Landon. Head. Yeah. He tells Landon that, you know what? If it helps you out, I don't mind the whole white lie of it all. He tells him that Bethany had just asked if he was happy and that he told her that he was doing everything he could to make sure he was. Yeah, is that what you're doing? <laughs> yeah, he is. Yep. After the game ended, Landon went and talked to Bowen while Bethany watched on. Annie catches up to Luke. And even she knows something like happened between Bethany and Landon. Luke admits that Bethany had tried to get back together. And he's like, yeah, that's not going to happen. I love Landon. But I could never love a man more than I love my own self-respect. Which is great. Annie's great. It's so true, though. Like, really and truly, like, the dude's gay. Like, you can't turn him back. Sorry, honey. Bethany redeems herself. For a while, I didn't like her. For most of it. Annie has said, like, Landa doesn't bring a guy around. But she thinks that he has never found a man who fits with him in the right ways. And that he's a very special guy. And he needs someone equally special to be with. Luke gets a text from Emmett saying that there's a post-game party that he's going to go to and if it's fine. And he's like, yeah, that's fine. Just be home at 2 a.m. Be safe. Text me if things get weird. <laughs> Is the most parental thing. True facts. So he meets up with Landon and we learn that Bethany apparently had wanted to talk about their ceiling, which is a Mormon thing, by the way, for when you're married, you're married here on Earth and also in the afterlife. And she never filed for a dissolution of their ceiling. And she had refused to dissolve it years ago, and he asked her about it again, and she just said she wants to talk. Apparently, she had wanted to talk about Landon and Luke and asking if it was serious. Luke's concerned that maybe he created a huge problem for Landon with this. And he's like, no, it didn't. I already told her the truth that you and I just met, and we're still figuring things out. So he didn't outright say they weren't together, because technically, he didn't lie. <laughs> now that Landon is going to come stay at his house. He needs to deep clean his house because it's a fucking disaster pit. So that's exactly what he does. He also picks up the wine that Landon really likes to drink for when he comes by the house. Well, when Landon does get there, though, he doesn't have wine glasses, <laughs> which honestly, I didn't for a very long time. I used to drink I out of wine glasses cups. at this house. Honestly, I just don't need them. Some, of, some of the wine I drink is screw top and I just drink it out of the bottle. Who needs a glass? Ariel's judging me so hard. But anyways, they start drinking together. Luke has never drank wine, so he just didn't even know. And he's like, I want I want to try this one. And it's like the super strong shit. So, but he likes it. He likes it. But they end up talking together through the night. They keep sliding closer and just closer like to it. each other. Try it. You like it. You try they keep it, sliding. Then you like it. Oh, my God. Closer and closer to each other on the couch. And then they discuss the fact that they... Both actually had wanted more kids at some point. Landon had hoped that he could start another family with somebody new, but that's not what most guys are looking for. We learn more about Landon's dating history and how the first man he dated was, was like an ex-Mormon, but his beliefs boiled down to screw the church and what they wanted were very, very different things. He asks Luke if he would ever want to start over again and have more kids after being done with Emmett. And Luke just says he's not opposed to more kids and there's definitely, like, a lot of tension between these two men. And then Emmett gets home, <laughs> and Luke insists that Landon takes the bedroom, but Landon's like, no, I'm going to take the couch because I'm a guest, so I'm going to take the couch. The next day, Landon says, you know what? It's super nice outside. What We should go to the lake and rent kayaks and just kind of go do that and then hike a little bit. And Luke's like, hell yeah, let's go. And he was a little shaky when kayaking but Landon was really nice and helped him out they kayaked around for a little while and eventually found a little quiet place to get off the kayak and hang out a bit after lunch <laughs> they went hiking 
And then on the way back, Landon wanted to stop at the store to make dinner for everybody. It's only going to be the two of them because Emmett is going to be staying the night at a friend's house. They eat dinner, they watch some Netflix, and Landon falls asleep on the couch, and it's so cute. The next day is Landon's last day being there, and he needs to go bring Bethany to the airport. Landon says that the weekend was great and asks if he wants to go to a wine bar with him on Tuesday while the boys are at practice. Luke realizes that he does not have anything nice to wear to go to this place. So he's going to go shopping during lunch from work to buy a new shirt. And his boss kind of can sense that something's like a little bit different with him. And he checks in just to make sure he's okay. But he just says he's been volunteering more at the school and he's just tired. His boss is just happy and asks if him and Emmett are working out things between them. And Luke just says it's a work in progress, which is cute. He goes to the mall. He hates the mall. And then he realizes that like most of these clothes are geared towards much younger people. So he goes to a department store. And a sales assistant finds him and starts helping him upgrade his wardrobe. By the time they're done, she tells him, you're going to knock her socks off. And in his head, all he could think is, no, this isn't a date. My friend and I are grabbing a glass of wine. Bro. Sure. Sure. Sure, Luke. When he's home later on that night, he realizes that he really wants to watch some shows, but At the same time, you know, who is he going to turn to during certain moments? And who would he talk to this stuff about? And he's just. Well, no, he told Landon that he wasn't going to watch any of them with until the next time he came back. Right. I'm just saying, like, if he wants to watch some shows, who is he going to turn to? Because now he's he's home thinking about all these things. And he's just continuously thinking about Landon. And he realizes that Landon was the easiest person to be around and that they were puzzle made of pieces and they fit together and it's so cute (laughs) it's adorable on tuesday he is like jumpy because he's like ready to go to this wine bar and he realizes like shit i am ready to go so fucking early but you know what screw it he's gonna go early to the bar anyways and he's thinking i can just go there it'd be great when he gets there i guess who's already also there landon so it looks like they both got there early. So I feel like this would have been the best for me as a bonus chapter at the end. Landon's inner yes, getting for ready this for first... this. Yes, yes. And being there early. And that would have been such a great so bonus cute. for me. Mm, yeah. It's just, yeah. They are escorted to a table and it's very intimate. This table is very intimate. And, you know, in the candlelight, they're like brought instead of like the regular tables, they're brought to like just the couple's tables tables. that it's like literally like a half a seat that they're supposed to share in the dark. And Lana's like sitting as far away as possible as he can. But Luke just thinks in his head how good Landon looks and talks about how his features look in the candlelight in his head. It's just so He's funny. only looking at it with an artist's point of view, don't you know? Sure, okay. He just wants to draw him. Yeah, they order wine, some cheese, they start talking. <laughs> Landon kind of tells them that, you know, we, we talk a lot, but we always talk about myself. You know, I'm happy to listen if you ever want to talk about anything. Luke can see where this is going, but he says he does not want to talk about Riley's death at all and he's just he's not ready yet but he says when I'm with you when I'm with you all of the dark stuff fades away and he can breathe when they're together and he feels normal again and he just wants to hold on to that and it's so cute he also out of nowhere realizes he just wants to draw him and he says this right out loud and says I want to draw you like right now (laughs) I have not drawn in years and I just I just want to And he says that he is classically handsome, but there's so much more to him and his looks would be empty on anyone else. And it's him that fills everything in. And he's just really talking up Landon. And Landon is so taken aback because no one has ever described him in such a beautiful way. But also embarrassed. He's got like the flush going on. (laughs) But then Landon also spots the tattoo on Luke's forearm and asks him to tell him about it. And he explains that he used to be a bad boy. 
independent artist and he used to go to rock shows and smoke a lot of pot and drink wine coolers and he got it the summer before he turned 18 because he thought it was artsy and evocative but now all he wants is a happy life with his family and these two just keep getting closer and closer during this meal and you can really sense like the tension on page throughout oh it was palpable so much and even luke thinks that if he he tipped his head their cheeks would brush and he starts getting all of these thoughts in his head and then a woman's voice interrupts them and it's annie and she's just saying that oh she's just here with some girlfriends and they're grabbing drinks and she didn't see them and it broke the, the moment a little bit but annie can also like see what a the little fuck bit is it on. broke the whole moment <laughs> i know yeah landon sprung so far so fast Luke realizes that something between them has shifted, but he didn't know what it was. They finish this up. They go their separate ways. Landon. Landon scrambles out of there as fast as he fucking can. He's like, like his uh, ass was on fire. Bye. I gotta go. I'm sure you have to go be home before Emmett, right? Uh, I gotta go. Bye. Even though they're yeah. both ridiculously early. <laughs> yeah. Landon texts him and asks if they want to go to the fair. Luke asks Emmett and he's like, yeah, sounds great. After basically radio silence all week they had been going texting every night and now they're like strained text messages for like a week and then it's like there's no game on friday because there's no school and bowen wants to know if Emmett and you want to go to the fair with us yeah their texting changed a lot and landon really seemed to kind of shut down and again he doesn't like you said he doesn't text nearly as much and anything he really texts are just little like little things and it's just it's not the same Emmett decides to talk to his dad and asks him, did you really come to all of my games? And he goes, yeah, of course I did. And Emmett asks why he wasn't in the stands like his mom was. Luke tells him, I couldn't get a ticket. I tried, but every game was sold out before the season began. And Emmett's a little confused because he gave two season tickets to his mom when they got them for the team for their families. Luke didn't know about bullshit and it's very clear that riley did not want him in her life and he also thinks about like what the fuck slid into her and just poisoned her so completely to like hate me so much but yeah so that was that was rough but off they go to the fair and they gorge themselves on delicious fair food and landon makes him try every single kind of fried dessert my i would be shitting myself Ugh. a lot of these things sounded so most okay all of these things sounded so fucking disgusting i think i've had some of them they're really enjoying themselves so they have fun but the drive home was quiet and halfway back Emmett asked if him and bowen could go camp out on the lake on saturday night and landon's like sure they end up going back to landon's house without like thinking they just automatically are going there they're all having a good time and they're just keeping the good time rolling Keep the good times going. It's a beautiful house. And he even says it just looks like it just came straight out of like a Southern living magazine. And it's just bright and airy, open. And Bowen and Emmett just disappear upstairs. And Landon offers Luke some wine. Luke asks Landon if he's ever gone to the art walk that's downtown. And, you know, maybe they could go to the next one tomorrow. And Landon just says that Luke's just going to have to explain to him all of the art because he has no idea. By the time that they realize how late it is, it's 11 p.m. Both boys passed out after playing Super Smash Brothers and they're just sleeping. And Landon just says that they can just stay there and he can sleep in the guest room. They have like a little joke about the couch thing back and forth, which was really funny. And just a callback to him staying there was cute. But he borrows clothes from Landon to sleep in. And Landon tells him that, you know what, you can wake up whenever you want in the morning because he's going to make breakfast. However, in the middle of the night, in the middle of the night luke wakes up and realizes oh shit i am head over heels for landon and how the fuck did this happen he's like we were best friends and how did i jump the track from friends to whatever this was and all he can think about is how he wants to brush his lips over his cheek and he starts to have some really really dirty thoughts about this man to the point that i get dirty thoughts about you <laughs> he even thinks like what does this mean like i'm am i attracted to men he's like i can't even ask 
Landon, hey, I've fallen for you. I've never felt this way about a guy, but do you want to show me the ropes? So then he starts Googling things about like, what if you think you're gay later in life? And it just starts to consume him. And then he gets an erection and he masturbates in this bed. And then afterwards, he fucking panics. He's like, I just did this and landed like in the bed and on his sheets and in his clothes. And he's just also thinking like, am I willing to risk losing Landon and everything we were together if I told him how much he meant to me? And now he's just like in a spiral of shit. Like he's just, yeah, he's like, I really like this man. Like, what am I going to do? Like the middle of the night thoughts, this poor guy, he finally just falls asleep. The next morning, he realizes that everything he wants in life is just sitting in this kitchen right now. Kids, Landon, happiness, warmth, and even Landon tries to make him coffee. And this man does a terrible job at it. Don't, don't get me wrong, but he doesn't drink coffee. It comes out tasting like tar. It's the thought, right? All he can think about is how much he wants Landon and wants to do all these nice things for him and say all these nice things. And he then forgets that they're also going to the art call later. <laughs> like, he just had this big fucking revelation. <laughs> and so, oh no. So he goes home, comes back to pick him up at five o'clock to head towards the downtown. And he is doing literally everything he possibly can to pretend he's okay. And he's not actually freaking out. They do manage to make it without him blurting out his secret to him. But the entire time that they're doing this walk, he's really trying to like keep his hands to himself. He keeps like a glass of wine in one hand and the other hand's like in his pocket. And then he just keeps fucking drinking through his entire art crawl. But he also keeps thinking about kissing Landon and thinking about their bodies moving against each other. And Landon like checks in on him because he's like, are, are you good? Because he seems off. And he goes... Yeah, I just, I don't normally get into crowds like this. So Landon asks if they want to head back home. He nods and they start to walk away. And heading back to the truck, he grabs Landon's hand and they just stop on the sidewalk. And then he just kisses him. Then Landon fucking goes for it and pushes him up against, yep, pushes him up against the truck and they're making out. But then Landon has a sense of clarity and says, no, we can't. I don't want to be your mistake. And tells, that nope. tells him that he thinks that he should just get a lift home and I will, I'll see you later. Of course, this sends Luke into a spiral of, nope, that is not what's going to happen. This is not how this is going to end. And he ends up going to Landon's house. Like he jogs to Landon's house. First he like doom spirals. And then he finally is like, no, I've come too far for this. And then like snaps himself out of it. And then he's like, I'm going to go. I'm I'm going to go set this straight. I'm going to go yeah, set this nope, right. Absolutely not. Nope, we're doing this shit. So yeah, he <laughs> pounds on the door. Landon opens the door and he just tells him, you're not my mistake. And I don't want to forget what just happened. I've been falling for you since we've met. And I, I just, I didn't know. And I didn't realize until it all hit me at once. I am absolutely gone for you. Landon is obviously a little concerned. And wonders if this is just curiosity. And he says, no, it's not. Then Luke asks him, like, how did you figure out you were gay? You said you had your eyes open. What happened? So Landon explains to him that he had fallen for a friend that he thought was his closest friend in law school. And basically, it kind of mirrors a lot how Luke is feeling. But the night that Landon tried to kiss this man, the guy pushed him away and was super horrified and disgusted and said he didn't belong there but after this whole thing happened, it was like Pandora's box opened. And the more he swore he wouldn't think about men, the more his thoughts went through. And then he graduated and he, you know, flew out and and he like ended up walking six miles to like a gay bar just to I look at the building. Five hundred. I thought I was muted. I thought I was <laughs> muted. <laughs> you were not. Nope. Uh just walked to the gay bar just to look at the building and he couldn't stop his thought process. And, you know, he said seeing men who loved each other so openly without shame, being in a place where the feelings I felt were normal and good, just made everything kind of fucking worse. And he flew back to Utah and he was just feeling so guilty and he hated himself and he hated what he wanted and he couldn't be happy. And he ended up driving to, to Zion and climbed up to the edge of a cliff. But then he thought of Bowen and he just, he worked so hard to find himself and fight 
for this life. So he just doesn't understand how Luke can just kiss him out of the blue and be okay with it. He is going through this. Luke apologizes and says, you know, I realized I'd fallen for you last night, but I've been falling for you since the moment we met. And I haven't been able to get you out of my head once since you said hello to me at that Tuesday night practice. So yes, I kissed you, but it's not out of the blue for me. It just took a while for my head to catch up to my heart. And it was just, it was very emotional. But then Luke realizes, like, he never even asked Landon if Landon liked him. (laughs) And Landon's like, are you kidding? I thought I was so transparent. Hiding how I felt about you was turning into an Olympic level feat of endurance. (laughs) I was never going to say anything. He just didn't want to ruin the friendship that they had. And they just have a really good conversation. Landon wants him to make sure that, you know, it's, you know, it's easy to throw these words around, but what are you going to tell people when they ask you? And to really, really think about it, especially what Emmett would say. He just started building a relationship with Emmett. And what if he lost him again? But Landon insists that, you know, that's why they have to stay friends. It, it could go wrong and he could lose him and he doesn't know if he's strong enough to survive that. Landon doesn't want to lose Luke as a friend because, you know, this is the best friendship he's ever had. He's concerned that he is not what Luke actually wants and Luke insists, you are what I want. The biggest part of me is ready to fling myself off this cliff and into your arms. I want to be with you and I want to know myself. You are the inhale before my blank canvas. The moment before my pencil touches the page, you're the manifestation of my dreams. You are my intensity. And it's so sweet. And then he doesn't want to break his heart. He just wants to fall in love with him. And they start kissing. But Landon says that they really need to take things extremely slow because he was with someone who over pushed before. And he just, he wants to be able to take things slow. They also need to be careful because Bowen and Emmett are best friends. And whatever happens between them, They have to preserve that for them. He ends up spending the night uh, mostly just to reinforce it to Landon that he really is in this. Of course, waking up, staring in his eyes. So cute. And they start to be touchy-feely with each other. And they hang out some more. They end up watching football together. They start making out on the couch. They get really, really into making out on the couch. And they're going a Mm -hmm. little bit faster than they had discussed. And then the garage door opens and they're instantly fucking snapped out of it because the boys are home. Luke thinks that they need to talk about everything that just happened because he didn't want to be another man who just went too fast for Landon. So he does apologize to him and says he didn't want to push him. He doesn't want him to feel uncomfortable. Landon also says, you know, I should also apologize. I only meant to kiss you, but I am so attracted to you. You drive me so wild. So cute. Everyone eats dinner together. Emmett and Luke end up going home. Landon then texts him and asks if he wants to go over while the boys are at practice. And then he can make him dinner and he agrees. And that's what they'll do. Again, the home life between Emmett and Luke has improved so much that they're actually speaking to each other. The whole thing with Landon, though, that they're going to go hang out makes him want to count down how long it will be. When he gets there, they end up making out a lot, but they hang out, drink some wine, eat some food, and then it's time for him to leave again. So sad, but they have fun. Uh, the next night, Emmett decides that he wants to learn how to make Parmesan bread and pork. Like, he just comes down. I want to know. Oh, shit. Hold on. <laughs> I, smacked my, I smacked my laptop like, backwards. So I can't do that. Emmett's like, I want to do this now. They don't have this shit at home, by the way. So they're going to go shopping together. And they have not gone shopping, just the two of them. And it's great. They're enjoying prepping things together. They talk about the fact that Luke now drinks wine like Landon does because now they're friends and you know Emmett really likes Landon and he thinks that he's a good guy and they eat together. I swear to God, Luke is so dumb <laughs> because it's so clear Emmett really knows what's going on, but uh, it's fine. Emmett asks Luke if it's okay if he goes with Bowen to Austin on Saturday while Bowen's mom is visiting because they're going to go visit the University of Texas and he says perfectly fine. But then he realizes, oh, no, Bethany knew about the two of them, quote unquote, but he doesn't want her to say anything to Emmett. So he texts Landon to make sure Bethany doesn't say anything. And Landon assures him that he'll make sure Bethany says literally nothing. He's just really concerned that, like, what if I found the love of my life, but I lose my son? He's so concerned that, like, if he tells Emmett, Emmett's going to rage. They just got this relationship back, you know. But yeah, Friday night. 
He's meeting Landon at the stadium, and Bethany is also there in the stands. And, of course, they sneak off to kiss under the bleachers like fucking children. After the game, Emmett hugs him, and it's just so sweet. It's, <laughs> and he promises to text him when he gets back from Austin. Of course, you know, because Bethany is in town until they leave the next day because they're leaving Saturday morning. Landon's going to stay at Luke's house because he had offered any time that Bethany is staying here, Landon can just stay at his house. Should have been the first hint. Just saying. When they get back to his house, they both have some wine. They make out some more and honestly starts escalating to the point where they need to stop. Otherwise, they're going to go a little bit too far. And Landon just makes sure to tell him that, you know, I just I just want to know that we can stop if we have to. Luke admits that he really wants to make love with him, and he's never done it before, but he wants to do it with him, and it's so sweet. He tells Landon that he wants to draw him, so he ends up sketching him, and Landon is just so taken aback at his sketches and even tells him that they're so amazing and he should have them in a gallery. Luke tells him that he hasn't drawn in 11 years and that, you know, Landon brought this back for him. He brought back everything for him he's giving him his life back he's giving him his son back and you know it's so sweet in the morning they hear Emmett's voice yes because they're sleeping and they hear Emmett which is not great because he shouldn't be there and they're both laying in bed together so Landon (laughs) launches out of bed and Luke goes down the hallway goes out into the hallway and talks to Emmett because apparently Emmett had forgotten his charger and stuff so they're just stopping by to grab it and like even Emmett makes a little comment like oh I thought Landon was here and he goes yeah he's just in the bathroom he wakes up really early (laughs) when he finally leaves Landon jokes and says well that's a wake up and you know I'm sorry but it was a good thing that we were pulled out of bed honestly they probably would have never left that bed and they end up hanging out at the house they watch some Netflix in their boxers and then Landon starts to massage Luke and this massage really It's a slow build, but this thing goes a lot. Uh, And Landon ends up eating his ass. And then he flips him over and then he sucks his cock. So Landon, super into this, and also ends up coming while blowing him. And this really meant something. And it's now like a new thread in their whole relationship. And their relationship is like building and building. And they're having, you know, more deep and intimate trust. So... The next morning, he wakes up to Landon kissing his shoulder, and they end up making out while Landon starts touching him, and they end up rubbing up against each other until they both come. Unfortunately, though, it's time to end their lovely weekend together since the kids are coming back home. Emmett and Luke (laughs) spend the entire Sunday together, and Emmett keeps talking about Austin and the University of Texas, and Luke can really see a future where every other weekend they drive down to Austin for the kids' home games, so he's really thinking about a future with them. This routine has been going really, really great for him. He hangs out with Landon on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Mondays and Wednesdays, him and Emmett spend a lot more time together. And their relationship has really blossomed so much. But he feels that not being with Landon every night is just, it's just so excruciating. And he just, he craves him all the time. And he thinks about all the things that him and Landon could do together he also though wants to explore himself so there's been a lot of time where he's learned like he's gone on and looked at how-to guides and he's watched a lot of gay porn and then he bought a dildo so that you know he can try it out and there's never really a good time to do this with a child teenager in the house so he ends up calling into work and he's loud is the problem is he's he's not quiet so he's like there would be a lot of questions being asked so he calls in to work to go in late And all he could think about was Landon as he's sticking up a dildo up his ass. After all of this, he realizes he is so not going to be cool or calm when Landon and him finally do make love because he's going to be so desperate for him. His boss at work notices a change in him and even asks him, oh, like, who is she? Who is it that you're seeing? Because you are clearly in love. I can tell. He does not correct the boss on the fact that he's not actually seeing a woman, but he does talk about Landon. like. Without using he, he just, oh, yeah, likes it, you know. But then he does feel very guilty at the end that he didn't admit it out loud. And then it starts to sink into him, like, what does it mean that I can't say it out loud? And that he feels this was just a test. He failed. Oh, no. So the homecoming game has come. And Bethany 
did not fly down for it because it was Bowen's weekend because they do the game and the dance and blah, blah, blah. And Bethany just didn't want to intrude. And, you know, this is just mostly for the kids. It's not really for the parents. The tension between Bowen and Bethany has finally kind of like fixed itself a little bit. But Luke does get a little bit jealous sometimes because Bethany has been Landon's best friend since they were kids. So on Saturday, they get their sons into their rented suits and a group of boys from the, I don't know why I said boys like that, (laughs) a group of boys from the football team are going to go to the dance together. And everybody looks so amazing. Annie wants to get a picture of everybody together. So it's going to be a picture of Bowen, Emmett, Luke, and Landon. And after they take this picture, everyone just kind of stares at the phone. Luke's wondering, like, what are they seeing? And when he finally sees the picture, he notices that Landon and him look like they are in love and head over heels. And it's just such a beautiful picture. So if it wasn't obvious before, it's so obvious in this picture. Before the boys head out he just tells Emma to be safe and to have fun and to text him when he goes to sleep and in the morning when he wakes up Luke and Landon have been planning their homecoming night for weeks and you know ever since they heard about this like whole lake camp out thing he has over to Landon's house but Landon's like hey yo give me five minutes so he literally sets a timer for five minutes and when the five minutes is up he goes in and there are candles burning and it really hits that tonight is the night that I would fall for you. (laughs) There's romantic music playing and it's beautiful and there's just like overwhelming with love. Landon had to just double check to make sure Luke is absolutely ready for this. He's like, yeah, absolutely I am. So they dance and they're just having such a beautiful time together and then they start kissing and then they head into the bedroom and they just start going for it in a beautiful way. (laughs) That's my exact note. Landon blows him and then rolls him onto his back so that Luke is on top and prepares himself so that they can have sex. They bang very sweetly and they make love and they tell each other that they love each other. And Landon tells him that he thinks that Luke is the man he was dreaming about and that he's the man that he dreamed about after all these all those years ago when he was struggling to find himself and that he is the man he's been searching for his whole life. I know. The next day they wake up in each other's arms and Luke tells Landon that he needs his help because he feels like he fucked up. He explains everything that happened with his boss and he's afraid that he failed Landon. Landon assures him that he didn't fail him at all. You're always going to face these kinds of assumptions. You you know, coming out is never a one-time thing. I don't want you to come out for me. It has to be a choice that you make. The last thing in the world I want is for you to resent us. If this is the first time anyone's ever asked about them and he's never really thought about like an answer, which I mean, is true. He's never really thought of how to answer these questions. And he asks how Landon did it. And Landon explains that the first person he said the words I'm gay to was his mentor at the law firm. And he didn't know if he was going to be fired. This fucking part made me cry, by the way. He didn't know if he was going to be fired on the spot. But what the man did was he got on the ground with him and let him cry. And when he was done, he told him that it was going to be okay and everything was going to be okay. The next day, he talked to a psychologist and the mentor drove him to the appointment. And that was really the first step towards really changing things. Landon asks how Luke would think his boss would react if he told him. And he has no idea really, but he thinks that he would probably be happy for him. Landon asks if he wants to go back and redo that conversation. And he does and says that he is going to talk to him on Monday. So Monday rolls around and he puts the framed photos on his desk. He has one of Emmett, one of Bowen, one of the four of them together. And the last picture is just the two of them together. It's so cute. He goes to his boss's office and he tells his boss, I just want to clear something up. I'm not dating a woman. I'm not in love with a woman. I'm in love with a man. And his name is Landon. And his boss just says, that is so wonderful. You're in love. You're happy. I just, you know, I assumed because you were married, you fall in love with a woman, but you know what they say about assumptions. And he asks how they met and they just have this beautiful, honest conversation. And his boss is so fucking happy for him. It's so amazing and sweet. And then his boss asks, well, what about Emmett? You know, and this is the biggest secret that he's been keeping from his son. And he just cannot picture telling him, like I said earlier, like sometimes he thinks about telling him and he just doesn't think he's going to handle it and there's going to be rage. He just keeps going back and forth with like him being furious with him. And they just, they've come such a long way. And he feels that 
Emmett would feel like he's abandoning him and he didn't want him to think that. So he's having a hard time like coming to terms with that. He decides he's going to work from home on Wednesday afternoon so he could be there when Emmett gets back from school and he goes into Emmett's room to clean. This whole section just took a whole turn. He finds needles and a folded up like piece of um, aluminum foil underneath his mattress, which is not great. This is not great. How did I miss this? Then he just starts getting images of Emmett being in his room alone, shooting up in the mornings, because again, like Emmett had been kept to himself for a very long time. And he just puts everything onto the table and he's going to confront Emmett. So Emmett comes home and is furious. And he goes, you were in my room? So he's obviously not denying that this is. He goes, he wasn't claiming elves or magic had put those syringes in there. And he goes, yeah. And Emmett's like, this is not your business. And he's like, this is my business. You know, everything you do is my business. I am your father. And Emma's like, since when? You were only my dad when you wanted to be, only when it's convenient to you. Only after you became friends with Bowen's dad and decided you were going to try and be cool. You don't care about me and you never have. And now it's really showing how much of a struggle Emmett's been having. And he feels that his dad wanted nothing to do with him until he was good enough, just like his mom, and that neither one of them wanted him. Until he made varsity. He thinks it it's something to do with varsity. Yeah. And yeah, he doesn't want to like, oh, now he's on varsity. Suddenly he cares that you're right. And then it's just this conversation keeps getting so out of control. And finally, Luke is just like, I am not going to lose you like I lost your mother. Your mother killed herself on this shit. And all of the color in Emmett's face just completely fucking drained. So the mom died from an overdose. He had told Emmett that she died in a car accident. What had actually happened is he had found her in the car in their driveway with a needle still in her arm. And when the paramedics had finally got there, there was literally no pulse at all. It actually turns out that she had had a very long drug addiction and he had never wanted to tell Emmett this. And he finally tells Emmett, like, your mom was addicted to heroin and she overdosed in her old house. And Emmett just completely fucking crumbles and was just so fucking sad. But that was a huge piece of contention with them that they had to move from their home into this new home after the mother had died. And he is now realizing that the mother died there. And like, that's not only because of monetary reasons, but that's also another reason why they moved. And yeah. it's just huge for him. Yeah. And then we also learned that his mom didn't even go to his games during the second half of freshman year. She just stopped showing up. So then he had nobody. He, again, thought that if maybe if he made varsity, she'd come back and maybe he'd come back. And he said that, you know, you didn't want me. You, you We used to be so close, but then you disappeared. And it, it was so hard to see from his perspective, too, because, like, then you realize between the two of them, he thought that his dad was disappearing, but that he also thought that his son was disappearing. So it was just such a big miscommunication. It was just, it was so rough. We learned that he is not using drugs, but he is using testosterone. He's juicing, which you're not supposed to be doing. And he stopped doing it right before football camp, but still. He is also feeling super guilt that everything that he's gotten is because of doping and it not because of who he is as a player. Luke is really trying to reassure him, like, everything you've done is because of you like you're a great player you're good without doping and they agree that they need to talk to Bowen about it so Bowen is the team captain for the offense and it turns out Emmett is like the like junior captain for because he's the yeah, captain I said of the that defense earlier. yeah but 
their huge part and the reason why he looks up to Bowen so much is that he holds everyone accountable, even himself. And he's been so worried about this because he knows that it would disappoint Bowen on an entirely new level. He feels like he would lose everything. It's just, but it's he knows lot. in order to do the right thing by Bowen, he, he needs, needs to, to heed. Yeah. And then he also wants Luke to tell him how his mom died. Luke actually has a box of everything, but he does explain to him like the crime scene photos are not for you. So he's trying to be as open with him as possible. And he explains about the money thing too. Like she spent a lot of money and credit cards and personal loans. And that's also why we had to sell the house too for that. And I know you didn't want to move. And the reason why we live here is just because it's the only thing I can really afford and also, I have to rebuild your college fund. And Emmett's just like, you kept all of this to yourself for over a year. And he apologizes. It's such an emotional moment. And then they start discussing about college. And he says that, dude, this part also, t- I started fucking bawling and I did stop. He shows Luke all of the drawings that he makes and he just wants to be like his dad. He doesn't want to play football anymore. He wants to be a medical illustrator and that is what he wants to do. And he wasn't going to play football anymore after high school. And he wants to make sure that that is perfectly okay with Luke. Dude, I know I'm like tearing up reading it because it's so, it's so sweet. Cause he just, like I said, I just bawled the whole time. Yeah. But of course, Luke is like, you know what? That's fine. But we need to go to Bowen's house. And so they're going to head over there. He texted Landon. Landon was like, yeah, that's fine. But also like when they get there, you know, Emmett's crying and it's just it's all emotional. So they go outside to talk and Landon asks what's going on. And Luke's like, we just we need to sit down and talk. So he explains pretty much everything going on and he tells him all about Riley and what had happened with her death and then he explains everything with the doping and he just really unloads everything so I mean this was also a very big turning point too so it was a big point for Emmett and Luke now that he can talk to Emmett he can now tell Luke all about this stuff Landon's fucking crying because obviously there's just it's so much going everyone is crying everyone's a crying mess Emmett's crying I'm crying (laughs) Landon's crying everyone's crying but it's such a big catharsis for him so after the boys talk they come back inside and Bowen says there are two options moving forward one you're bounced from the team you doped you're gone it's cut and dry the second one is you face yourself and you keep playing and Bowen's like, which he oh. says that he knows is going to be harder for Emmett. And it's up to Luke and he gets the final say in it. And Luke agrees that he needs to keep playing. And again, everyone again is just fucking crying. And it's just my whole, my whole stuff. After everything, you know. Him and Landon say they love each other. Landon, so cute. Anyways, everything was great to Emmett to face his fears until he had to go back in to play. He like woke up puking. He was so nervous. And he honestly played like shit because he's in his head that he is not good enough. But he had been playing for like a little bit of time without it. And he was doing fine. And Bowen finally like dragged Emmett out and had like a face to face with him. Luke really preps him and says, you know, I've watched you. I know you're so good. You can do this. And they're really like pumping him up. He does eventually get the one hit that he needed to fucking continue going on with this game. And they, the team did one win team did one <laughs> what sentence was that, but it was, it was rough going, you know, that it was, it was not an easy win, but Emmett does say, wasn't you know, an easy way to speak either. No, it wasn't. No, Emmett thanks Luke for everything, for believing in him, putting up with him, buying milk and peanut butter, 
taking care of him, even when he didn't know he was doing it. And it's just, it's so sweet. Bethany is also at Landon's house. because It's a home game. And her and fucking Landon are baking together. And they're just, you know. Well, normally, normally Landon would go to but they're Luke's all hanging house. Out at- but because of the circumstances and they all need to be together with Bowen present, Landon told Bethany, like, we all need to be together. Bethany's there's no reason why the five of us can't be under the same roof. And so they're all hanging yeah. out at the house. And we learn Bethany's not as terrible of a person as we thought she was. <laughs> Like, she does run, like, a an LGBT group for teens at their church and all this stuff. So she does actually do some good things. Emmett tells Luke that he loves him, and it's so sweet, and it repeats in his head, and it's so cute. They all go to bed, and Landon gives Luke his bedroom for the night, even though they squabble about the couch. But Landon And then didn't... Bethany shows up into the bedroom. She just, like, but comes Land... up and knock, knock. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, would only allow the best for the people he loves. So as he's sleeping, the door kind of opens and he's thinking like Landon's definitely not going to be coming in here. And it's actually Bethany. She wants to talk to him alone. And she is just going on about, I've known him since we were kids. I love him. He's my best friend. Dude, even I was like, get to the point. And I, she's I, like, Luke kind of did too. But I mean, even she's I was like, like I, you know, I screwed up last year. You know, I love him so much. And all I've wanted for years is for him to find happiness. And he's finally had found it. And he loves you. So basically, she's just giving the blessing. And she said that she had kept well, the she ceiling. Was saying be- she messed up last year, not in the way that he originally thought. But she was just trying to tell him that she would always be there for him. Not such a weird way to do it. Like, as an eternal spouse. So he would never be lonely. Not she wanted to rekindle things and she didn't get her point across correctly. That's why she didn't want to break the ceiling because she didn't want him to have no one in the afterlife. And she didn't want him to be settling to be alone. But she thinks that Luke is the love of Landon's life and that he is the man that he is meant to be with for here and always for eternity. And if he is here and she wants to go to the temple and devolve their ceiling. So, great. But now we got playoffs. And playoff season in Texas is super big. So, they're going to do all the playoffs. They do extremely well. They're going to go to state. Um, Bowen sat everybody down and said he didn't want to go to the University of Texas. He actually wants to be a teacher. He doesn't want to play football at all. So, this final game is going to be his literal final, final game. game. So, they get to the final game. Guess what? They win. Congratulations fabulous and they got home super super late Emmett, oh my god comes out and he just goes i have something for you and it's literally a drawing of him and landon together and he says they're i saw kissing. you saying their kiss it's just landon's head is on his hips and back and they're kissing And Emmett just says, I saw you guys a couple weeks ago. I had to run back to get the pump from the locker room because the balls were underinflated and I passed you in the parking lot. Because they would sneak out during little bits while they were setting things up to to have little moments. so sweet. And he's been drawing these pictures on the bus. And Luke is just sitting here stunned. (laughs) He's like, I don't know, it's obvious. He goes, I mean, I kind of caught you guys. I noticed about a thousand other things. Neither one of you are Academy Award award winning actors. And he's like, you couldn't have told me something before. He goes, we're in the playoffs, dad. (laughs) And he's like, does Bowen know? He's like, Bowen's known the whole time. Like way before me even. It's so fucking funny. So they do like a celebration. And it was really sweet too, because the celebration for them winning state. For the winning and Bowen has a speech and the speech is so sweet. And it turns out Emmett helped him write the speech. Part of it was because he thought of his dad when he wrote it. Because obviously Bowen has dyslexia and he has a really, really hard time with it. But he dedicated so much of it to his dad and it was really. And it's so, so sweet. But turns out they don't want to stay at this party for very long because Emmett Bowen and Luke have a surprise for Landon. They've been working behind the scenes before the party. And here's what it is. Luke proposes to Landon and it's so 
They even all went together to the store and picked out a ring for him. It was so cute. And then our epilogue is four months. It's their wedding day and everybody is there and it's just so sweet. They married in their backyard and, you know, Bowen and Emmett were at their sides when they vowed to love each other for all time. And their house is just full. They all pretty much instantly moved in with them. Their house is full of every, like all the pictures and everybody's inseparable football's over. So they have their weekends together and everyone just does everything together. And it's so sweet. And towards the end, Luke just says, what do you think about making them both big brothers for real? And they talk about having another kid and it's very sweet and it's so cute. Yeah. And that's the book. And I cried so many times. So many times. So many times. Who is your favorite character? Probably Bowen. I liked Bowen a lot and I loved Annie. Yeah. Annie was good. Yeah, The supportive characters were really good. They were very supportive. Most of them. Who is your least favorite character? Emmett's mom. Yeah. Stupid bitch. Yep. Hate her so much. Ugh, yep. Gross. Amazon gives us a 4.7, which is the highest we've seen in a while. And Goodreads is a 4.5. What did you rate it? I'll give it a 4.5. I cried so much. I really enjoyed this book. Like, I really, really enjoyed this book. This was a five-star read for me, except for two things. Ooh. So I did end up rating it 4.5 on Goodreads, but there were two things, unfortunately, that just like irritated me so much Mm -hmm. that I docked it off. In the epilogue, there's a continuity thing where all of a sudden Landon's bedroom went from being upstairs to downstairs. So they made a big deal about how Landon's bedroom was upstairs in the beginning of the book because they said that there was like a Jack and Jill bathroom with Bowen and him, how there was connecting doors. And then in the epilogue, they talked about his bedroom being downstairs. Well, I'm wondering if they moved it downstairs when everybody moved in so that the boys could be next to each other. No, because they talked about putting Emmett in the spare bedroom across the hall. It would have made sense if they said they moved it. Gotcha. The other thing that irritated me, and it was just a me problem, was he had constant memories of the reason why Emmett's jersey is 99, and it's because nine times nine is infinity. No, it's not. It's 81. Why is that a thing that you would say to a child? Because if you put nine and nine, it I don't know. Well, that's a Pisces sign, but. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why that irritated me so much. Literally, it was a five-star read for me other than those two things. I really loved this book. I wanted to know more about if this woman had an affair. (laughs) She probably did. I'm sure. She probably didn't (laughs) remember it with her drugged outness, but I really, I really enjoyed this book. Yay. Okay. I'll be your cucumber rating. Five or six. Five too. It was pretty palpable. Survivability. I wouldn't exist in this world because I'm not a man. Doesn't mean you (laughs) would. If it was me in this world and it had to be like. I think I'd be fine. I would be an emotional wreck, but I would be fine. Yeah. This book was super relatable. Yeah. It was really good. I agree. Yeah. I I really enjoyed this one. Next time on our August specials, we are taking a drastic turn and (laughs) we are going to be discussing some summer animal shifters. That is all I'm going to tell you. Good luck with that. You will see. Because it is quite a ride. Very wild. Yes. So thank you for joining us. Make sure to check out next time or even our regular episodes. And make sure to keep reading. And keep it smutty.